Hi, this is not clickbait. It's uh, it's 2 a.m. I couldn't sleep, and it turns out there was a massive Xbox email leak because of the FTC. Uh, I looked at my phone, and Tom Warren of The Verge was reporting that a massive amount of highly confidential and unredacted Microsoft docs were leaked as part of the FTC Microsoft case. If you guys don't know, that's the case where the government was suing to try and stop Microsoft from buying Activision Blizzard. They were not successful. However, I guess they got some kind of last laugh because all of the uh, confidential files were attached to a single file, incorrectly hidden, and then as of like midnight tonight, posted publicly, which has led to a giant leak. So uh, because everybody that I've seen on the internet is already reporting on this, I figure I'm going to just dive right in and tell you what I saw and what I think it means. Because there was some pretty interesting and juicy stuff, specifically about Nintendo. Uh, however, <laughs> there is an alternate theory from Bradley B here uh, with a really cool profile picture who said, I'm probably wrong, but this could be orchestrated for some type of gain, maybe misdirection or leverage on the FTC so another important merger gets fast-tracked as... <laughs> As in maybe Xbox made all this stuff up and then tricked the FEC into leaking it so they could force through another merger. It's possible. I don't know. More importantly, a bunch of games, uh, specifically the Bethesda games, were leaked as part of the document. So you can see things coming up like an Oblivion remaster, a new Doom game called Doom Year Zero plus DLC, a Fallout 3 remaster, a Ghostwire Tokyo sequel, which is actually pretty awesome in uh, in 2024. And then Dishonored 3, so that's getting a, a trilogy. Um, an Indiana Jones game, and then two hidden games called Project Kestrel and Project Platinum. And a vaguely named I licensed IP game, which doesn't really mean anything. This all comes from this leaked slide uh, from ZeniMax, owner of Bethesda, before they got acquired. Um... Nothing too interesting on here other than they predict that Elder Scrolls 6, or they predicted before they got bought, that Elder Scrolls 6 would make a billion dollars in its first quarter of release, uh, predicted for fiscal year 24. That all has shifted. Uh, another leak showed they are now, I mean, first of all, probably less likely to make a billion dollars in the first quarter because they're skipping one of the major consoles, PS5, and also not coming out until 2026. Um I think this is already kind of well-known, but it was 100% confirmed with this. Now, more interestingly, uh, was the stuff that leaked about Nintendo Switch 2 and Nintendo in general. Uh, you see, Activision Blizzard, before it was going to get bought by Microsoft, was having discussions with all the other players, Sony and, and Nintendo. And in one of those discussions, which was leaked as part of this email, um, was that Nintendo Switch 2 was shown to developers in December 2022 and it's probably gearing up for a 2024 launch, and it's gonna be close to Gen 8 platforms in terms of strength. So Switch 2 is gonna be like PS4, Xbox One. It's called NG Switch. I'm assuming it's gonna be a Switch next generation. I'm assuming it's gonna keep the Switch portable mobility, so a slightly more powerful Switch is definitely what it looks like in 2024. This was the coolest thing to me, and I don't think a lot of... Uh, I didn't see a lot of people covering it on Twitter. It's uh, it's an email from Phil Spencer, head of uh, gaming at Microsoft, uh, that was back in 2020, where he talked about their intention and desire to acquire Nintendo and or even Valve. Um, Nintendo is the prime asset for us in gaming. Um... The unfortunate or fortunate for Nintendo situation, though, is that Nintendo's sitting on a big pile of cash and they have a board of directors that until recently has not pushed for further increases in market growth or stock appreciation. Um, he mentions former uh, Microsoft board directors member Value Act. Value Act is a uh, major hedge fund that has been buying up billions of dollars of Nintendo stock and used to be on the board of Microsoft. So he's saying there might be an opportunity there to use their connection as they're going to be a big owner of Nintendo to lean into a possible deal. But as of now, they don't see it as a possibility. The other line here is very interesting where it says, our board of directors have seen the full write-up on Nintendo and Valve, and they are fully supportive on either if the opportunity arises. Which means if, 
I don't know, the winds of fortune change for either Nintendo or Valve, and the opportunity arises, Microsoft is ready to swoop in and buy them up. Uh, though I don't know how easy it would be to get through the FTC with that. That's what they want to do. Um, they're also looking at Warner Brothers Interactive and then, of course, ZeniMax, which they ended up buying. So uh, pretty interesting. I think uh, this line is also interesting. He says, Phil Spencer says, at some point, getting Nintendo would be a career moment. And I honestly believe a good move for both companies. It's just taking a long time for Nintendo to see their future exist off of their own hardware. A long time, winky face or smiley face. Which is interesting because Nintendo's hardware has actually done phenomenally well in the Switch era, at least. I think they're the number one seller of this generation, if you count. Um, Switch is part of this generation. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I think Nintendo is pretty happy where they are. They're having kind of a banner year. I don't, I mean, I don't see this happening anytime soon, but... It is funny that Phil Spencer is going to have his eye on it for, I guess, the rest of his career. Uh, outside of that, there was some pretty big hardware leaks. So uh, I'll just show it here. Um, a, in November of 2024, apparently they have an Xbox Series X refresh that has no disk drive and is 100% all digital. Um Faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, more immersive controller. That controller is this, codenamed Sebile. It's called the controller with pants. <laughs> well, I mean, it looks nice. I guess it's got less, uh, it's less loud. You know, all the sticks are quieter. And, you know, looks good to have a good controller. Um, yeah, lower power usage. Interesting design and same price. So... Uh, this is, I mean, this is nice. You get a terabyte more storage for um, the cost of a disk drive, but a lot of people are all digital anyway these days. Um, not really affecting me so much, but yeah, I get it. It's kind of cool. Uh, there's also going to be, I think, a refresh of the Series S as well, but only with just more, more storage. Uh, and then the biggest news was this, uh, which is like leaks about their next Xbox, which is pretty much confirmed to be coming in 2028. Which is pretty far. Uh, I'm actually shocked they're looking at a five-year life cycle from now um, on the Series X and S. But I guess that makes more sense nowadays. And this one they're trying to build into a, a hybrid cloud gaming platform. Which I looked into and it's pretty interesting. Cloud hybrid games. Uh, it's the idea of like games that are partially rendered in the cloud and partially rendered on your device. To where... Um, the part you're controlling feels snappier and more responsive, but they can do a lot more with it uh, graphically. So for example, I, the example that they showed in here, which made sense to me is, this is not Microsoft, but it, it's an idea of it. Um, this is a test, I think back in 2014, a demo. But all of the armies and all of the enemies here are running in the cloud. And the only thing running locally is the ballista that you're controlling. So if you're moving the controller, that feels very, you know, with cloud, like you move left and right, you feel that delay and you don't like it. This part would move locally and feel great, but then whenever you shoot, it would send that to the cloud and uh, your your rocket launcher or whatever would be updated. And so all this stuff can be rendered and you can get a lot more things on the screen than you'd be able to do if it ran locally because you have infinite computing power in the cloud. So it's interesting. I mean, it's a cool idea. Uh, they cringily revealed that uh, they're probably going to go with... <laughs> Uh, you know, a Zen 6 AMD CPU, uh, AMD GPU. Um, it's fine. I'm just NVIDIA biased. Um, and yeah, overall, that, I mean, that's their big thing is, the, is focus on the cloud, probably fully digital. Um, yeah, reducing reliance. They, they have this chat chart here of path to leadership in gaming where they see, you know, a huge increase in cloud-first gamers who play on smart TVs, low-end PCs, mobile only. Um, and they want to get them on Game Pass, basically, and get them all hooked in. So uh, it's an interesting idea. They've hired Kim Swift, who made what was part of the team for Portal, to build cloud-focused native games. I don't know that she'll be able to do it. She also worked as a Google Stadia design director, where I don't think they produce anything. We'll see if this happens. Again, cloud, to me, is still... Uh, tough but if they're looking at 2028 things will be a little different so uh, interesting to see anyway that's pretty much it phil spencer had a pretty cool email in 2021 
uh, where he came off looking pretty good. He was asked about studio closures and said, I don't think I've ever closed a studio due to its profit and loss, p &L. It's always either because of leadership leaving or team losing its passion, which basically means they don't close studios for not making enough money if they have a good idea and are passionate about it, which is pretty cool for an internal email. Uh, other than that, no other major leaks, though there was a ton of stuff, so there may be more discovered later on. I'm going to go to bed for now, but if any of this was interesting or you find any more, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Bye.